past few days flew by with Kerr and I's team. They would train in the morning and do a couple of missions in the afternoon. Obviously Naruto always complained since Naruto wanted to test his skills in the real world but Hinata was always present to bonk him in the head. Who would have thought that the little shy Hinata? Kerr and I was very surprised with the skill level that Naruto and Hinata displayed. If she had to judge, then the Kibi nailed it by saying they had Jonin level skills. Their team was in fact comprised by one Jonin sensei, two green Jonins, and a poor Genin lost in the middle. Naruto, Hinata, and Kurnai would never leave Shino behind, so they began focusing more on him so he could be brought up to speed. Naruto, with the help of Kurnai, started on Kage level exercises for his chakra control. He had two exercises that he needed to do to bring his control to the highest level possible. The first was waterfall climbing. This exercise allowed, when mastered, the user to control vast amounts of chakra with great precision, since climbing a waterfall is extremely hard. The last exercise allowed one to have perfect chakra control almost rivaling Tsunade, the slug Sonin. This particular exercise was rather practical to perform. The user deposited a chunk of sand with multiple colors in his hand. The point of the exercise was to separate and align the sand by color using only chakra. It was considered mastered when the user managed this in less than 10 seconds. Hinata didn't have any weaknesses, per se. She had uh, overall good skills, whether it be Taijutsu, Ninjutsu, Genjutsu, or even Kenjutsu. Her chakra control was flawless since it was a basic requirement for her gentle fist, or her own version, the flowing fist. Shino, however, was another different level. His Taijutsu was a low gaining level since he was a long range fighter, their typical weakness. His Ninjutsu was the three basic academy jutsus coupled with his clans. His Genjutsu was non-existent. Overall, he was about mid geni in skill. However, they would change that. Naruto placed a few restriction seals on him since it was too abrupt if he started using gravity seals. They decided to start his elemental training since everyone on his team already had theirs mastered. Surprisingly, he had earth and water, both defensive elements. His team was the perfect storm of offense and defense. In fact, his nature served him well above anyone else. As a long range fighter, normally his weakness would be close combat which was solved by his training and abilities. Along with all this training, they also did teamwork exercises. One of the things that made Konoha as the strongest in the elemental nations was their notion of teamwork, and loyalty above all else. Their teamwork was excellent, neither of them had any problems with each other. Currently, we find Team 8 or Team Kurnai heading towards the Hokage's office after a morning training. I should clarify the last statement, it was training for Naruto, Hinata, and Kurnai. But for Shino, one would call it torture. The poor Genin was driven to the ground in order to gain the physical attributes he needed. Hokage's Mission Assignment Room The old Hokage was sitting in the middle of the table smoking on his pipe while handing missions to the shinobi. To his left side was Aruka, the school teacher of the students of Team 8. The Hokage was deep in thought remembering his prime, the thrill of the fights and the adrenaline pumping through his system. Not many shinobi had the privilege of growing old. The shinobi's life expectancy was actually around 30 years old, and reaching old age was very rare. However, any shinobi that reached such age began to reminisce all they did in their life. Shinobi since birth are trained to fight, and fight they do. It is all they know throughout their lives. There is no greater death than death at the hand of your enemy in the midst of battle. However, being taken by old age isn't something any warrior would want. Hiruzen Saratobi, third Hokage of Konoha, and hailed as the god of shinobi. The man that had seen two great ninja wars and lived has been reduced to nothing but a paper pusher. Don't get me wrong, he loved his village and his place at Okage, but his time was nearing its end. It was time to pass his hat and have the younger generation assume his place. He was snapped out of his thoughts when he saw Team 8 walking through the door. It always brought a smile to his face seeing Naruto and even Hinata. He was like a grandfather to both of them since Hinata was expelled by her father. He didn't know why, but Naruto's smile always managed to cheer him up, no matter how depressed the man was. Naruto was, for lack of a better word, a bundle of happiness. It surprised him how, despite the glares and hatred he received, Naruto managed to keep a cheerful and loving personality. Team 8, reporting for mission, Lord Hokage, Kurnai said, bound to Hokage. 
Even though the Hokage was clearly old, he still was a very powerful shinobi, and one of the strongest in the Leaf Village. Team 8, welcome. Let's see what we got here. The Hokage said it, receiving a D-rank mission scroll from Maruka. We have cleaning Inazuka's kernel, capturing Tora, helping an old lady move to a new house. The Hokage never managed to finish. Old man, we'll take catching Tora, Naruto said, it, smirking. The Hokage raised an eyebrow. No one liked chasing that damn cat Naruto had already done in the past. Are you serious, Naruto? He not to ask. Not really in the mood for running after a damn cat. What people don't know is that Tora is actually a ninja cat, trained specifically for helping Ginyan teams with their teamwork. Just trust me, Naruto replied, picking up the mission scroll. Hey old man, what's the record for catching Tora? Naruto asked with a knowing grin. I think it's around 3 hours, but why do you ask? Do you intend to break it? The Okage asked. Something like that, Naruto replied. He went back to the middle of the room and took a small scroll from his pocket. He unrolled the scroll to show a small, intricate seal in it. He placed it on the ground. Naruto bit his thumb, drawing blood, and slammed it in the seal, saying, Summoning Jutsu! There was a poof of smoke. When the smoke cleared in the middle of the scroll was Tora. The Hokage's eyes almost popped out of his sockets, and Naruto just laughed at everyone's expression. Mission accomplished, Lord Hokage, and I believe it's a new record. Naruto said, laughing his ass off and delivering the cat to the Hokage. How did you do that, Naruto? Kurnai asked. Even she had to chase that damn cat in her getting days. I already had to chase her a few times in the past, and somewhere along the way, I got tired and placed a summoning seal on the cat. So I just offered a bit of blood and chakra, and I could summon Tora through the seal on this scroll. Naruto explained, and the Okage and Kurnai just nodded dumbly. Kurnai sensei, since I already got Tora and set the record for about 15 seconds, do you want another mission? Naruto asked. Kurnai didn't have time to answer, as suddenly there was a puff of smoke in the Okage's desk, revealing a small dog. He had brown fur and wore a Konoha headband around his head. A dog? Naruto asking, wondering who it was from. This is Pakun, a messenger and tracking dog from Kakashi, Okage explained. Lord Hokage, I have a message from Kakashi, Pakun said, uh, handing Okage the scroll. Okage opened it and said, Lord Okage, our client Tazuna lied about the mission parameters. It appears that the wave is under Gato's control, and he wants Tazuna dead. We were attacked by the demon brothers Gozu and Meizu of Kiragekir, and we defeated them. We decided to continue. However, I request backup since most likely we'll be attacked again. This time, probably by Jonin level missing ninja. Kakashi Hatake, Jonin Sensei of Team 7. Team 8, the Okage started, getting their attention. It appears that the C rank mission I sent Team 7 was to be bumped up into a low A rank. Kakashi requested backup, so I'm sending you. He'll explain everything when you meet him. Dismissed. Yes sir, Team 8 said. Okay, team, go home and get your supplies. Meet me at North Gate in an hour. Karna said it. They all left the room and went to prepare for their first A rank mission. North Gate, one hour later. One hour later, Team 8 gathered in the North Gate, getting ready for their departure. Karna inspected everyone's supplies as it was the duty for a Jonin Sensei. Okay, team, before we depart, everyone has their supplies Kunai, Shuriken, Bood, first aid kits, soldier pills? Karna asked and got a nod from everyone. Since we will be traveling at high speeds, we'll reach Team 7 in a couple of hours. However, we don't know which route Kakashi took, so we'll be taking the main one, Kurnai said. No need, Sensei. Do you still have the message Kakashi sent? Naruto asked. Yes, I do. Why? Kurnai asked, wondering what good it would do. Naruto bit his left thumb, drawing blood and spreading across his right hand palm. He went through a few hand seals. Boar, dog, bird, monkey, ram and slammed his hand on the ground and said, Summoning Jutsu! There was a poof of smoke, and when it cleared, in front of him stood a medium-sized brown fox with five tails. Flashback. Hey kid, come into the seal. I want to talk to you, the Kiwi said. Naruto is currently ten years old at this point. He sat on the ground in the lotus position and started meditating. After a few seconds, Naruto stood in front of the Kiwi, of which was currently lying on the ground beneath a large tree. You need something, Kurama? Naruto asked. Actually, Kurama was the Kibi's real name. It appears that the young Naruto grew on the Kibi, and he trusted him with his name. I'm giving you your birthday present, Kurama said, smirking. 
Is it a big flashy jutsu? Naruto asked, excited. During Naruto's birthday, October 10th, Konoha always celebrated the Kibi's defeat by the 4th. Some of the villagers would gather up and try to harm Naruto, so his birthdays were always a dark day for Naruto. But the Kyuubi, Hinata, and the Okage always managed to cheer him up. It's a great technique, and you'll be the first to use it. I trust you will use it wisely, Kurama said, and in front of him, materialized a rather big scroll. This is the summoning contract for the Fox Clan. Open it and write your name in blood in the first spot, Kurama explained. Naruto did as he was told. He opened the scroll and bit his thumb. He wrote his name in the first slot and pressed all five fingers down, making a handprint. Now, to summon a fox to help you bite your thumb and go through these hand seals. Boar, dog, bird, monkey, ram, and port chakra into the technique. Give it a try, Krom explained. Naruto did the technique, and when it was over in front of him stood a small fox. Thanks, Kurama. You're the best, Naruto said. Of course I am. I'm the nine-tailed fox, king of the biju, strongest being in the world, Kurama boasted about himself. You smell that stick up your ass? Naruto said, uh, laughing while dodging the Kibi's tails that were trying to smash him. And a flashback. Naruto, you need help? The fox asked. Yes, Kinto. We need to track Kashi-sensei to provide backup. This paper has a scent, Naruto said, and gave the paper to Kinto so he could track him. I have him, when you are ready, Kento said it, and Team 8 dashed out of Konoha, heading towards Team 7. I didn't know you could summon, Naruto, Kurenai said it. I have the fox summoning contract, it was a gift, from the QB, Naruto explained it, getting a nod from Kurenai. She didn't want to pry too much, a few hours later with Team 7. Team 7 had just left the boat that they used to cross into the wave. Everyone was walking at civilian pace as they had tossed it with them. Tazuna was, as he put, a super amazing bridge builder. They were traveling in a diamond formation, Sasuke in front, Sakura and Kiba to the side, and Kakashi in the back with Tazuna in the middle of them. They were walking calmly, but they had their guard up since Kakashi warned them about a possible Jonin encounter. Suddenly, Kiba sent someone in the bushes and quickly picked and threw a kunai into it. Idiot, stop playing with kunai, Sakura yelled. I'm not playing, I thought someone was there, he replied, and went to check the bush, only to find a small white rabbit. Kiba, you idiot, you almost killed this poor rabbit, Sakura said, and that sent Kakashi thinking. Hmm, white burr in spring? That's strange. Unless it was used as a substitution. Get down, Kakashi yelled, and everybody hit the deck with Kakashi dragging Tazuna. Just as he yelled above them, a huge broad metal sword flew by their heads and got stuck in a tree. Moments later, on top of the sword appeared a person. He was a tall and noticeably muscular man with pale skin, short spiky black hair, brown eyes, and small eyebrows. He was wearing bandages like a mask over the bottom of his face. Under his mask, he had a relatively narrow jawline and jagged teeth. He wore his forehead protector sideways on his head. What's with this? A bunch of kids playing ninja, as Shinobi said. Zabuza Momochi, a rank missing ninja from Kira Gector, known as the Demon of the Mist, Kakashi said, preparing to face him in battle. Oh, look, if it isn't the copy ninja, Kakashi, the Shinobi now identified as Zabuza said. Just hand me the old man, and you can go. You know I can't do that, Zabuza. Kakashi said, and lifted his headband, revealing a fully matured Sharingan in his left eye. I got the Sharingan right in the beginning. I'm honored, Zabuza said. Removing a sword and making a few hand seals, he said, Secret mist technique. The air started becoming thicker, and after a few seconds, the whole area was covered in a thick mist. Kakashi barely managed to see his own hand right in front of him. Team, keep your senses sharp. Zabuza is a master of the silent killing technique. Kakashi said, and his entire team shivered. I demand you show your face, Abusa, and face me, Sasuke yelled. A Jonin was someone he could try his power on, and once he defeated him, he'd be closer to killing his brother. Are you serious? Zabuza asked, rhetorically projecting his voice around the area not to reveal his position. Zabuza started releasing his killer intent, and Sasuke started shivering. Sasuke couldn't take it anymore, and brought his kunai to his neck, preparing to kill himself. Relax, Sasuke. I won't let my teammates die, Kakashi said, reassuring his team. 
Suddenly, Zabuza appeared in the middle of Sasuke, Kiba, and Sakura that were guarding Tazuna. He brought his sword and started a horizontal slash, ready to kill them all. However, Kakashi was faster and impaled Zabuza, revealing him to be a water clone. Another Zabuza appeared behind Kakashi and cleaved him in half, only for Kakashi to burst into water. Zabuza, seeing this, suddenly felt sharp metal to his throat. He slowly turned and saw Kakashi, with the kunai ready to kill him. However, Kakashi wasn't expecting this Zabuza to be a clone. Seeing the Zabuza in front of him burst in the water, he looked around, only to be met with a fierce kick to his stomach, sending him crashing into a nearby lake. Zabuza shunshined Kakashi and went through a couple of hand seals and said, Water prison! The water around Kakashi started to erupt and circle around him, trapping him. Zabuza stood there with his hand on the water sphere, holding Kakashi in place. Shit, I got caught, Kakashi thought. Everyone, take Tazuna and run. His water clones can't go too far from the original, Kakashi said. His team was in a bad place. He can only hope his backup arrived in time. Zabuza can't stand to me. I'm an elite, Sasuke said, and dashed forward, heading to the enemy. Zabuza created a few water clones. Sasuke engaged in a taijutsu fight with them, but quickly realized it was a bad strength. Sasuke couldn't keep up with Zabuza's speed and strength. The battle was over quickly when Zabuza gave a strong kick to Sasuke that sent him crashing into the trees hard. Sasuke couldn't even get up and could barely breathe. You should have run when you had the chance. You can't even scratch me, Zabuza said. The arrogance of that boy got him killed. Zabuza's clone picked his sword and went to finish the job. Sakura was shaking. She barely managed to stand up and Tazuna was already on the floor. His legs gave out. Kiba seeing Sasuke in danger ran towards Zabuza. Sure, Sasuke was an idiot and an arrogant bastard, but he couldn't let him be killed. Kiba, arriving near Zabuza, went for a punch, but Zabuza simply caught his wrist and, with the other hand, hand lifted Kiba by the neck and started punching him relentlessly. After a few punches, he simply threw him to the ground. Zabuza was making his way to Sakura, who was still frozen in place. Sakura knew she couldn't match Zabuza. She only graduated because of her good chakra control and book smarts. All hope seemed lost until Zabuza heard. Fire style, dragon fire jutsu. Zabuza didn't have time to dodge as a stream of hot fire came from the woods, completely obliterating the clone. In front of Tazuna and Sakura arrived Naruto, Hinata, Shino, and Kuranai. Naruto looked around, and it didn't look good. Kakashi was trapped inside a water prison, and Sasuke and Kiba were on the ground, injured. Quick, gather Sasuke and Kiba around Tazuna and Sakura, Naruto said, and Kurenai and Hinata quickly picked up both Sasuke and Kiba, and regrouped with Tazuna. Summoning Jutsu, Naruto said, as slamming his hand on the ground, and a puff of smoke appeared a small fox with light red fur with four tails. You must be our summoner, Lord Naruto. My name is Kagura, a medic fox, the fox said. Nice to meet you. I need your help. Sasuke and Kiba seem injured. I need you to help them as you can. I'll cover you, Naruto said. Fox summons. Where did he get the contract? I need to talk to him if we get out of this, Kakashi thought. Kakashi already knew Naruto since he sometimes watched Naruto from afar, trying to make sure he was safe. After all, Kakashi was one of the prize students of the fourth Okage. Shadow clone jutsu, Naruto said, and four clones appeared. They went their separate ways, making a square around Tazuna, Sakura, Sasuke, Kiba, and Kagura. Ninja art, four flames formation, the clone said at the same time. Suddenly, a purple barrier erupted around them, making sure that Zabuza couldn't get inside. Don't touch the walls, otherwise they'll get burned. The barrier will stay up for your protection, Naruto explained. Oh, a Ganyan who knows Fuinjutsu. Maybe you're better than the rest, Zabuza said, creating a couple more water clones. Inside the barrier, both Sakura and Tazuna sighed happy that backup had arrived. Kagura was currently healing them. Sasuke had cracked ribs and a ruptured lung, while Kiba had a few bruises in a dislocated shoulder. Outside the barrier, First we need to release Kakashi from the prison, Kurenai said, and her team nodded. The water clones made their way towards Kurenai's team, and one of them said, Kirigekir no Jutsu. A thick mist appeared blocking the view of everyone. Hinata activated Byakugan, but couldn't see much was the mist was laced with chakra. Naruto activated his Sharingan and extended his senses, trying to find Zabuza. However, he felt the presence of someone watching the fight. That person was around tuning skill based on chakra levels. Someone is watching. Since he didn't help Tazna, I can only assume he's with Zabuza, Naruto thought. And discreetly using hand signs warned his team about another shinobi watching. 
win style. Great breakthrough, Naruto and Hinata said it at the same time. They breathed in air and sent a strong gust of wind that pushed the mist away, completely making Sabsa frown. Each member of Team 8 separated and engaged in the clones. Naruto quickly destroyed Zabuza's clone with a fireball, and taking this opportunity, he took a kunai. Charging with lightning chakra, he threw it at the woods with extreme speed. The shinobi who was watching didn't expect that and didn't have time to react, and the kunai embedded deeply in his shoulder. The shinobi, seeing he was caught, jumped into the fight and took his side by Zabuza. How did you know about Haku? Zabuza asked, surprised that they found Haku. She was rather skilled in stealth. Alright, just a quick side note, uh, the creator of this story made Haku a girl. I, I don't know why, just go with it. Alright, back to the story. We are a team of trackers. I'm a sensor, so when you used your Kirigekyo no Jutsu, I extend my senses and bound him, Naruto explained. It doesn't matter, let's end it now. Zabuza said, and Haku went through a few hand signs. Slamming her feet into the lake, she said, uh, Thousand needles of death and sent the thousand water needles towards Team 8. Hinata, Naruto said just above a whisper. Yeah, she replied and jumped in front of her team and started spinning. She started releasing chakra from all of her chakra points. Heavenly spin, she said, and a blue dome of chakra appeared around her, deflecting all the needles. Looks like I'll have to start training my team seriously, Kakashi thought. He was infusing his lungs with chakra, trying to gain as much time as he could. Team 8 quickly dispatched with the water clones. Naruto and Hinata went through a few hand signs, and they said, Fire style, dragon fire jutsu, Naruto said, and Hinata said, Wind style, great breakthrough. Naruto's fire attack combined with Hinata's wind attack, and the result was a massive stream of fire that went quickly towards Zabuza. Haku didn't have enough time to use a water jutsu because of her injured shoulder. Both of them jumped away, making Zabuza release his hold on the water prison, freeing Kakashi. Kakashi tried to regain his breath as he jumped towards Team 8. Thanks, Kakashi said and crouched. Haku, we are leaving, Zabuza said and shunshuined away with Haku. He knew he wouldn't stand a chance. He was up against Kurana Yuhi, Konoha's Genjutsu mistress, but also the blonde kid and the Hyuga girl seemed good. And besides that, Kakashi was now free. Naruto dropped the barrier and went to check up on his injured teammates. How is everyone? Naruto asked Kagura, who was finishing healing Kiba. Sakura was surprised how strong Naruto and Hinata were, and how they worked well together. I already healed them. Their injuries weren't life-threatening. This one, Kagura said pointing to Sasuke. He needs to take it easy for a few days. He had a ruptured lung. Tazuna, take us to your house. Zabuza will be back, and we need to be prepared. Kakashi said, and they left with Karnai. Carrying Sasuke as he couldn't make any effort and was still unconscious. Tazuna's house. A few miles down the road, and Team 7 and 8 arrived with Tazuna at his house. The house itself was near the ocean and seemed a simple wooden house. Tazuna led the shinobi inside. Tsunami, I'm home, Tazuna said, happy that he finally got home. Father, Tsunami said, hugging him. I'm relieved that you are alright. Tsunami was a very beautiful woman. She had mid black, dark blue hair and black eyes. She wore a pink shirt with red sleeves and a dark blue skirt. It's thanks to the shinobi, they saved me, Tazuna said. Tsunami approached his protective detail and bowed, saying, Thank you for protecting my father, shinobi. You are welcome to our house. We appreciate it. Is there anywhere we can lay two of my students who got injured in a fight? Kakashi asked. Tsunami nodded and led the leader Jonin to the rooms upstairs. Sakura, Kakashi said, getting our attention. Tomorrow, we will start training more seriously. We need to be prepared for when Zabuza returns. Since Naruto injured his teammate, it will be a few days until he's ready. How is a little bit of training going to help us against a Jonin? Sakura asked, wondering is her sensei trying to kill her? Sakura, who was it that saved us? Kakashi asked rhetorically. If I remember correctly, the Genin of Team 8 actually put up a fight against Zabuza while Kiba and Sasuke were simply hammered away. Kakashi explained, making Kern eyes smirk inwardly. Fine, but I still don't understand how a few days will help us, Sakura kept pressing. Any training is good for you. If you have to face Zabuza, at least let's raise the odds even if slightly, Kakashi said to which Sakura finally nodded. Kakashi got up and approached Naruto who was chatting with his team. Naruto, Kakashi said, getting Naruto's attention. How do you know my name? Naruto asked. You may not know, but I actually watched over you sometimes when you were around 4 years old, Kakashi said. 
Inu? Naruto asked, remembering an Anbu with the dog mask sometimes helping him with the mob's problems before he met his father, and the whole training began. That I am, he replied, giving his traditional eye smile. Come, Kakashi said, placing his hand on his shoulder. We need to talk privately. Naruto nodded, and they both shunchuined to outside of the house into the nearby woods. Naruto and Kakashi in the woods. Kakashi and Naruto arrived in the woods via the traditional leaf shinshuin that Kakashi used. That shinshin is really starting to get old. Why don't you use an elemental shinshuin? Naruto asked. Pretty much all of Konoha always used the leaf shinshuin, and while it got the job done, it was, for lack of a better word, lame. Kakashi raised an eyebrow to what Naruto just asked. Can you do the shinshuin? He asked, which Naruto nodded, and used his lightning shinshuin to teleport to a few meters away. Kakashi was actually surprised to see a genin use the Shunji no Jutsu, much less an elemental version. I see you can, Kakashi started, and by the looks of it, you already have the lightning element mastered. How? Naruto studied the man for a moment. Even though he helped him several times when he was young, people tend to change. After a few seconds, he found no deception and decided to answer him. I've been training myself since I was five years old, Naruto replied and Kakashi was actually surprised to see someone without a clan training at such a young age. However, he quickly remembered his burden, and he needed to be strong to withstand all the hate of his village. I see, maybe I can teach you a few lightning jutsu since my affinity is the same as you, but we're getting off topic here. Kakashi started. How can you summon foxes? Kakashi asked. Naruto froze, wondering if he should tell him the truth about the QB. There are many people that tried to get close to Naruto to finish him off. However, he decided he should trust him. It was a gift from the QB, Naruto said, making Kakashi glare at him. Suddenly, the air between the two dropped a few degrees. Naruto, Kakashi said in a very serious tone. However, Naruto didn't even flinch. He was already used to it from the villagers and simply shrugged it off. The QB attacked our village and almost destroyed it. You cannot trust him. Naruto, hearing this, really started cursing his luck. It was always the same. Every time he met someone and told them about the QB, everyone told him that he couldn't be trusted. Kakashi, the QB was being controlled by the Sharingan and was forced to attack the village. It wasn't his fault, Naruto said, and Kakashi's visible eye widened. Only Madara Uchiha managed to control the QB, and he was long dead. Kakashi studied Naruto for any signs of lies, but found none. However, he decided that he should talk to the Okage about this new development. Better make sure. I'll trust you, but keep in mind that foxes are very cunning, Kakashi said. Kakashi, remember that if it weren't for the medical fox I summoned, Sasuke probably wouldn't have made it. Naruto stressed and Kakashi nodded, seeing it was probably true. You remember me of the fourth Okage, always seeing good in everyone. Kakashi said, reminiscing about his getting days, where he was always a fool until his best friend died to save him. Fourth Okage? Naruto asked, wondering how Kakashi knew him until it finally clicked. One of the days Naruto was wandering through the Namikaze compound, he found a picture of his father's guinea teen. There was a silver-haired boy with a mask covering the bottom half of his face, a pretty girl with brown hair and two red marks on each cheek, and lastly a boy with black spiky hair, black eyes, and orange goggles. Naruto turned the picture and it said, Minato Namikaze, Kakashi Hatage, Rin Inazuke, and Obito Uchiha. Ah, Naruto yelled, making Kakashi jump. I remember now. You were on my father's guinea team with Rin and Obito, right? That's right, your f father, Kakashi said, stuttering. Naruto was the son of the fourth Hokage. How could he be so blind? For the love of God, he's pretty much a carbon copy of him. How the hell has Konoha been so blind? He should have been there for his sensei's son. He should have done more. Oh shit, Naruto said, knowing that he let that part slip up. Naruto started panicking on the inside. He wasn't supposed to reveal it yet. Kakashi, you can't tell anyone until I reveal it, Naruto said. Don't worry, I know very well why you can't say it right now. Kakashi said, easing the boy's worries. And uh, I'm sorry. I should have been there for you. If I had known, I would have taken you in, Kakashi said with his head down. Don't worry about it, it wasn't so bad. If you had taken me in, I wouldn't have met Hinata, Naruto said. Kakashi perked up and asked, Hinata? Hinata's father disavowed her from the Yuki clan when she was 8 years old, because she was weak, and since then she'd been living with me. Besides, she's my girlfriend, Naruto explained, and Kakashi actually broke out in a fit of giggles. 
If you're thinking what I think you are, I'm going to hurt you, Naruto said to breaking Kakashi of his perverted thoughts. Okay, okay. But she will be a stunning girl in a couple of years. You did well snatching her while young, Kakashi said, and Naruto growled, to which the Jonin simply ruffled his hair. Actually, I was wondering if you could tell me about my parents, Naruto asked shyly. I asked the old man, but he never had a really prolonged contact with them. Of course, I knew them very well. For starters, I can tell you that you adopted your mother's obsession for ramen, Kakashi said laughing and getting a smile from Naruto. And so they talked for a few hours. Kakashi told everything he knew about them, which was the most Naruto had heard about his father since he knew him better than his mother. They talked and the hours were passing by without either of them realizing it until the sky was already dark. Well, Naruto, I think it's time to get back. It's already getting dark, Kakashi said. Thank you for telling me about them, brother, Naruto said, feeling like he bonded with Kakashi. After all, since Kakashi's father's death, he grew closer to his sensei. The fourth was the closest thing he had to a father. Brother, you say. Okay, let's go, little brother, Kakashi said, ruffling his hair and leaving the forest with them. The next day. The next day after the teams arrived, we find everyone quietly enjoying breakfast prepared by Tsunami. They were eating until Kakashi decided to break the ice and explain a few things. Everyone, Kakashi said, getting everyone's attention. After this, we are going to train, as I explained to Sakura yesterday. Zabuza will be back, and probably bring some help, so we need to be ready. We will alternate between protecting Tazuna at the bridge, protecting his family, and training, Kakashi explained, and everyone nodded. They continued eating for a few minutes until everyone was finished. Sasuke was already getting better from his injuries and could walk. However, he still couldn't do anything too physically stressful to the body. Sakura, Sasuke, Kiba, Naruto, and Ninata will come with me to train, while Karuna and Shino stayed and protect Tsunami and Inari. After they train, I'll take some of you to the bridge to protect Tazuna. Everybody agree? Kakashi asked, and everyone nodded. A few minutes later, Kakashi's team, accompanied by Sasuke and Kiba, left the house for training. In the woods for training. Okay, now we will train Chaka Control, Kakashi said. Chaka Control? Sakura asked. Yes, we all know how to call upon Chakra. However, you don't know how to properly use it and manage it. By doing this exercise, you will be able to last longer in fights and learn new jutsu faster. Kakashi explained and Naruto wondered what type of exercise it would be. Now, I'll be climbing trees, Kakashi said and Naruto sweat drop. Big brother Kakashi, don't tell me you brought your team into an A-rank mission without even teaching them proper chakra control. Naruto asked, and Kakashi actually felt ashamed of not teaching more personal skills. Don't sweat it, dope. We already know how to climb trees, Sasuke said, and Sakura agreed. Naruto just shook his head, knowing that Sasuke didn't understand the point of the exercise. Actually, I focused more on teamwork exercises. You know how Sasuke and Kiba act. They are both brash and tend to jump into situations without thinking. Kakashi said, and both Sasuke and Kiba scowled. Wait, you called uh, Kakashi big brother? I thought you had no one, Sasuke asked. He's not actually my brother by blood, but we're both orphans and we both look at the same person as our father. Naruto explained, and Nata raised an eyebrow. She knew who Naruto's father was, which means that Kakashi must have been close to the fourth. Enough chit chat. What I want you to do is focus chakra to the bottom of your feet and walk up to the trees. When you can walk to the top two times in a row, we'll move on, Kakashi explained. What do you mean, walk up the trees? Sakura asked in all her infinite wisdom. Like this, Naruto said and started walking towards a tree. When he arrived near one, he simply placed a foot on its trunk and started walking up. Everyone in Team 7, minus Kakashi, was shocked seeing Naruto was walking vertically. Oh, Naruto, you already know this chakra exercise very well. Kakashi and Sasuke see. Dope, how do you know that? I demand you teach me, Sasuke asked. Naruto just ignored him. He already knew Sasuke all too well from the academy. Sasuke believed everyone should be grateful that he allowed them to breathe. Didn't you hear your sensei? Naruto asked rhetorically. You need to channel your chakra to your feet and run up the tree. Exactly. Take these kunai to mark your progress. Hinata, I assume you already know how to do this. Kakashi asked and Hinata nodded. Hey, Hinata, watch me. I'll get this down in an hour, Kiba said, bragging to her. Kiba, I already told you that I'm with Naruto. If you opened your eyes, you'd see that there are other girls that may like you, Hinata said, and Kiba frowned. Maybe she was right. Team, get started. Naruto, Hinata, you are coming with me to the bridge, Kakashi said, and they nodded and started walking to the bridge to protect Tazuna. You never know, Zabuza would try a sneak attack at the bridge. Everyone on the bridge was peacefully working. It was a bright sunny day and the air itself was rather warm due to the ocean's breeze. Kakashi was reading his traditional orange book and giggling like a crazy
crazy person. Naruto switched his dropped when he saw him pull that book out. Hinato was simply leaning on the bridge, watching the ocean, and Naruto appeared to be working on something. Kakashi raised an eyebrow and decided to know what he was doing. Hey, Naruto, what are you doing? Kakashi asked, getting Naruto's attention. The blonde had both of his hands palms slightly apart from each other, and he appeared to be channeling right on chakra between them. I'm working on a jutsu I'm creating. If it works, it'll pack quite a bang, Naruto said, grinning, and Kakashi raised an eyebrow. Naruto reminded himself of when he was young. After all, he graduated as a Jonin when he was 13 years old, and had already created his own jutsu. That's not easy, you know, Kakashi said. I'll never know until I try it, Naruto replied. Naruto decided to take a break and help on the bridge. Hey, Tazuna, Naruto yelled, getting the old man's attention. I'm tired of doing nothing. Can I help? Naruto asked. The more the merrier, Tazuna replied. But before he could continue, Naruto placed his finger in a cross sign and said, Shadow Clone Jutsu, and out came around 100 clones. Kakashi's eyes widened, seeing the number of clones the blonde could do. Naruto just shrugged it off as a normal scenario when they were training. Okay, Tazuna, tell them what to do, Naruto said, and Tazuna just nodded dumbly. Naruto, how can you make so many? Kakashi asked, still in shock. One side effect of being a Jinchurik is that you develop massive chakra reserves, Naruto said, and Kakashi glared at him, pointing to Minata that was nearby. Don't worry, she already knows everything about me, including my legacy, Naruto explained, and Kakashi sighed. The work on the bridge went extremely well with the help of Naruto's shadow clones. If he continued helping the bridge, it should be done in two weeks. Later that day, Tazuna's house. The group sat down to eat dinner as a young boy came in and shot a disgusted look at the group of ninja before declaring how they were all stupid to face Gato, and were just going to die, which Naruto angrily views was the case. What would you know about pain? I bet you all lived in sheltered lives in that ninja village of yours. You don't know what suffering is, the young boy yelled after Naruto denied what they were doing was futile. So what? Things are bad, but you know what? I have had it much worse. You still have a mother who loves you and a grandfather, a house to keep you warm, and food every night. You don't know what it's like to be hated in your own village for something that's out of your control. You don't know what it's like to be beaten, kicked out of shops, and forced to go through the garbage for food. You think your life is bad? Fine. But don't just sit around and moan about it. Do something about it. Fight back. Don't be a coward. Kakashi sensei, I'm going out to clear my head. And with that, Naruto stormed out the front door. Hinata got up and quickly followed him. Kakashi sensei, Naruto's life couldn't have been that bad, right? He's been lying to get attention, Sakura asked. No, Sakura. Everything he said was true. Naruto was kicked out of the orphanage at age four, and lived on the street for months before I found him and took him to the Hokage. The Hokage gave Naruto an apartment, but he had to learn everything for himself, and was constantly being beaten and kicked out of stores. And that is the watered-down version, Kakashi said, shocking the group in the room. Even Hinata, she was expelled from her own clan when she was just 8 years old, because her father deemed her too weak and unworthy of being the heiress of the clan. But luckily, they found each other, Kakashi said, and everyone started looking at them in a new light. They were brave kids that didn't back down, tossing his house roof. Naruto stormed out of the house and made his way to the roof to gaze upon the dark sky. He needed to forget his previous argument with the spoiled kid. A few moments later, Naruto saw Hinata approaching but said nothing. Hinata made its way towards Naruto and sat beside him, resting her head on his shoulder. Neither of them said anything, and continued to look at the stars in a comfortable silence, until Hinata decided to break the ice. You shouldn't really blame him. He's just naive, she said, trying to ease Naruto. It's just, we all suffered. Me being a Jinchuriki, you getting expelled from your family, and even Sasuke getting his whole clan killed by his own brother. Compared to us, he has a good life, Naruto replied. It's true, we suffered, but not everyone has the strength to move on and forget the pain. If it weren't for you, I probably would still be the same shy, weak girl I was. You were the one that gave me strength. Look at Sasuke. His pain drove him to becoming obsessed by revenge, Hinata said. You are unique, Naruto, Hinata continued. People only get to know you, pull strength from you. You are my beacon of hope, but you just need to be it for this kid too, she said. I'll do my best. Hinata, he replied with a small smile, pulling her close. Now that I think about our lives, you never took me out on a date, she said. Naruto was caught by surprise by this, but she had a point. In a relationship, it's usual for couples to go on dates. I never really thought about it, but it wouldn't be a bad idea. We could use the time we have here away from hateful glares of Konoha. But tomorrow, I take you to dinner, Naruto replied with a smirk. I'd love to, she said, uh, giving him a kiss on the cheek and dragging him inside as Naruto had calmed down. The next day, 7pm. The next day after they set up their date went by normally. 
Everyone trained with Kakashi and Kurenai, however both Naruto and Hinata trained away from them since they were more advanced. Today the charge of watching Tazen on the bridge fell on Kurenai with Team 7, and to say they were bored was an understatement. Sasuke actually seemed ready to go on a killing spree just to pass the time. He wanted to train, but he got stuck with watching Tazuna, a few workers, and crap a ton of Naruto clones working on the bridge. Sasuke seethed his teeth when he arrived at the bridge and saw all the clones Naruto did. That power shouldn't belong to him since he needed that to avenge its clan. It doesn't matter, only Nuchiha can defeat Nuchiha, Sasuke thought. Only if he knew. Currently, we find Naruto and Hinata getting ready to go on their first date. They asked for permission to Kakashi and Kurenai since they were on a mission. Neither of them had proper clothes other than their shinobi attire. The only difference was that they left their headbands at home, signifying that they were off service, if one could call it that. They walked through the town, deciding on where to eat. When they arrived at the center of the town, both of them were shocked. This town was poor. There was people asking for jobs, kids living on the outside, and even the resources that the markets had to sell were scarce and of very poor quality. Gato had pretty much destroyed this small town. At least if their mission was successful, Tazuna managed to finish the bridge, be able to recover from this. Not how they decided to spend their first date, but they already loved each other, so this date wasn't much. They were walking, watching the various shops and restaurants, trying to pick a good place when they heard someone yelling in the middle of the streets. Quick, old man. We already told you that you need to pay up, one of Gato's men said. There were two guys trying to collect payment from a shop owner who was on the ground, looking terrified. But I already paid this month, the shop owner replied. Boss said that you sent more merchandise for shipping, so you need to pay more taxes this month, he said. If you can't pay up, we'll take your wife as payment, he concluded and started physically assaulting on the man. Naruto and Hinata, seeing this, jumped into action. In a swift motion of punches and a few kicks, Gato's men were running away, bruised and bleeding, wondering how kids managed to do this. Summoning Jutsu, Naruto said, in a puff of smoke, appeared a small, one-tailed black fox. His name was Kiyofu and he was a spy fox that was extremely skilled in stealth and information gathering. What do you need, Naruto? Kiyofu asked. I need you to follow those two men and find where Gato's base is and any other information you can, Naruto explained, and the fox dashed out of sight. Naruto turned to Hinata. Shall we continue? He asked, extending his right arm, which Hinata took, and pulled him closer. Finally deciding where to eat, they entered and found a place that was welcoming and warm. It wasn't a fancy restaurant, but they didn't care for that. During their lunch, they tried to talk. However, they already knew everything about each other. It was a rather strange date, as most of it went by in silence, so they simply ate in a comfortable silence. When they left, it was still early, so Naruto decided to drag Hinata to a local cinema and watch something. A couple hours later, they arrived at Tazuna's house. Their date didn't go that well, but they didn't care. After all, the point of the date was to spend some time together since the mission started. It was either training or guarding Tazuna. One week later, one week had passed and the teams were preparing for the showdown at the bridge. It was a terrifying sight for any civilian to see a shinobi getting ready for a fight. The ground was filled with weaponry, kunai, shuriken, senbon, flash tags, explosive tags, ninja wire, giant shuriken, and even Naruto's sword was out of his store seal. He decided to carry it on his back since he could need it at any time. Everyone ready? Kakashi asked and everyone nodded. The fox Naruto had sent to gather information and spy on Gato paid off. The fox found out that Zabuza would attack today, since Haku was already healed from her shoulder wound, as was Zabuza from chakra exhaustion. Since Gato plans to betray Zabuza, when the fight is over, he may well send someone here. If he does send it, they probably won't be Shinobi, Kakashi said it and brought his hand to his chin, and started pondering who to stay back, keeping in mind that he would face Zabuza and Haku. How about we leave Sakura, Hinata, and Kiba here, since they have good taijutsu, and they can easily take out any thugs Gato sends. The rest will go to the bridge. I can engage on Haku with Sasuke if necessary. Kakashi Sensei and Kurnai Sensei can take Zabuza while Shino provides overall support and protects the client, Naruto suggested. Um, Kakashi pondered. Shino will be in a tight spot if either Zabuza or Haku split past us and rush the target, Kakashi pointed out. Naruto considered the scenario. I can put the same barriers last time. Besides, Shino controls bugs from inside the barrier, right? Naruto asked, and Shino nodded. It's good. Well then everyone, stick to the plan. Tazna, are you ready? Kakashi asked, and Tazna weakly nodded. After all, Tazna would be bait to draw them out. Everyone started moving out, and before they left, Naruto gave Hinata a brief kiss while whispering, Good luck. If you need me, here, use the ring, and Hinata nodded. On the bridge. 
Tasuna was approaching the bridge, guarded by Kakashi, Karanai, Naruto, Sasuke, and Shino. They entered the bridge, and there was already a mist in the air. Naruto discreetly activated a Sharingan while placing the usual Genjutsu on it. They made their way to the bridge, moving as silently as possible. While everyone minus Tasuna, who was wearing bullets and breathing hard, just fear from itself. Naruto using a Sharingan could see glimpses of two chakra sources. They are already here, both Zabuza and Haku. Just about 100 meters away, Naruto said, and everyone stood in their guard. How do you know that? Kakashi asked. After all, Kakashi's sensing abilities weren't that good, and he was considering summoning one of his dogs. I'll tell you later. Can't tell Sasuke here. Naruto whispered to his ear, and Kakashi nodded. Now was the time for chit-chat. They continued walking until they stood a few meters away from each other. Kakashi, we meet again. I'll enjoy the bound in your head, Zabuza said in a dreary voice. So many places to choose from. I can slit your throat, stab it into your heart, destroy your lungs, burst your kidneys, or break your spine. Zabuza continued saying while unleashing a lot of killer intent. Kashi, Kurna, and Naruto seemed to mute to it while Shino and Sasuke were sweating, and Tasuna was already in the ground as his legs gave out. Naruto saw Zabuza move from his spot, but he didn't have time to warn his team. He picked up his sword and jumped in front of Kurna, blocking the Executioner's Blade. You're very good, kid, to manage to find me, Zabza said. Not many people manage to keep their head cool enough to think in these situations. Sometimes even Jonin will get caught. If it weren't for Naruto, Kurnai would already be dead. Say goodbye to your mist, Zabza. Naruto said, going through a few hand signs and unleashing a gust of wind that blew the mist, getting a frown from Zabza. I really hate wind users, Zabza said, shouldering his sword and getting ready for the attack. As we planned, everyone take their positions, Kakashi ordered. Why should the dope fight while me and Elite will just stand here and watch, Sasuke said in his typical arrogant tone. Now is not the time, Genin, Kakashi said in a very serious tone, making Sasuke gulp. You will stay with Tazen outside the barrier and only jump in if Naruto needs. Are we understood? Kakashi asked, and Sasuke nodded. Get ready, Kakashi said. Tazen retreated with Shino. Naruto made four shadow clones that formed a square around them and said, Ninja Art, Four Flames Formation, and erupted a purple barrier with Tazuna and Shino inside, and Sasuke on the outside. Kakashi and Kurna got closer preparing to fight Zabza, and Naruto with a sword on hand prepared to face Haku. Zabza sent a few water clones to surround Kakashi, Kurna, and Naruto. Naruto turned to Kakashi and he gave him a nod. Naruto disappeared in a burst of speed. And one second later, every single clone burst in the water. Looks like you found your rival in speed. What do you say, Haku? Zabza asked. It looks like that, Haku replied and dashed towards Naruto. Naruto, seeing this, gripped his sword tighter and started running towards Haku. They met roughly at halfway and started exchanging a few blows, neither of them gaining advantage. Naruto would easily block every single attack, however, he didn't manage to land any either. They found themselves in a standstill. Naruto was blocking Haku's kunai with the sword. Haku, seeing he had one hand occupied, started going through single-handed seals, and once finished, said, Flying water needles of death, and immediately a thousand water needles formed from the cloned water and started raining on Naruto. Naruto, seeing this, knew he didn't have many options to avoid it, and decided to test his new eyes and the power he learned to use. He shifted his eyes in the Mangekyo and said, Kamui. Naruto made his body intangible and everyone watched in awe as well as fear as every single needle passed through Naruto's body, exiting on the opposite side. It's, it's not possible, Haku said. You wanted to clone. I can feel your chakra and your sword is pressing against my kunai, she explained. Well, that's one of my most powerful jutsus, Naruto said, smirking. He used this moment of distraction and gave a powerful kick to Haku's chest that sent her flying and crashing on the ground near Zabuza. Zabu was still wondering how this kid managed to do that and also beat Haku in speed. You're really good for a Genin, Zabza said. Kakashi laughed and said smirking. Zabza, what if I told you that Naruto here is actually the dead last? Zabza's eyes widened. That brat couldn't possibly be the dead last. That or Konohas had been seriously training their Genin. Zabza, before we begin our real fight, I have a proposition for you, Naruto said, and Zabza raised an eyebrow. What do you want? Zabza said, wondering what the kid meant. I heard that Gato plans to betray you once you get the job done. He plans to kill you and Haku once you kill Tazuna so he doesn't have to pay you. So, how about we join forces and kill Gato and in return, you can come back with us to the leaf, Naruto explained and everyone raised an eyebrow. Naruto, you can't just offer asylum to a missing ninja like that, Kakashi said. Kid, you're crazy. 
What well, makes you think I would join the Leaf? Sopsa asked. I bet you are tired of all the running and having to keep looking for missions just to live in. And I know the old man well enough. Both of you would be great assets to the village. Zabza is one of the seven swordsmen. Haku has the ice release. Naruto said in silently, Zabza agreed. Both of them were tired of the constant running, and they wanted a place to settle down. How do you know about my bloodline? Haku asked. She didn't reveal the last time they faced each other. Did you really think that we would just train well apart? Information is half the battle, so I sent a fox to spy in Gato's warehouse, and he found you training. Naruto explained, and they both scowled. A Jonin getting spied on without realizing it. Be that as it may. But I still have a reputation, and in my place, it's all I have. We will fight, and if Gato appears to finish me off, then we join forces. And then, I'll decide if we'll go to the Leaf, Sabza said, and Naruto nodded. If Naruto was lying, which Sabza wouldn't know, Sabza would be destroying his reputation by betraying his client. Immediately, Haku started going through hand seals and said, Demonic Ice Mirrors. All around Naruto, ice mirrors started forming, trapping him in an ice dome. Haku walked to one of the mirrors and simply entered the mirror itself, as if she became nothing more than a reflection. Inside the ice dome. Inside the dome, Naruto could see that Kakashi and Kurenai were already engaging Zabza. Even for both of them, Zabza was no pushover. Naruto needed to end his fight so he could go help them. Also, Sasuke was around and he knew that if they needed to help, he would jump in. Uchiha pride and all. Funny, Naruto was an Uchiha, but even though he had pride in his blood, he was never arrogant about his power. Naruto focused on his battle and noticed that every mirror around him had Haku's reflection in it. He noticed that each Haku was holding three sunbone in each hand, getting ready to attack. Naruto's eyes widened when he realized that Haku was much faster now. If he didn't have the Sharingan to track her movements, he would need to resort to higher level of attacks. Haku looked at Naruto surprised. You were the first person to ever dodge my attack when they are trapped in this jutsu. Naruto simply smirked. Haku continued her relentless assault, switching from mirror to mirror while launching countless senbone at Naruto. This went on for a few minutes. Naruto would simply dodge all senbone without even needing his kamui. How are you dodging my attacks? Haku yelled, finally losing her cool. You can't win. This jutsu spends a lot of chakra, and you're already getting low, Naruto simply said. Shut up! Haku yelled and charged at Naruto as fast as she could, but Naruto's Sharingan could still follow her perfectly, and saw her every single muscle movement in slow motion as she charged. Naruto took the opportunity and grabbed her by the hands, throwing her into one of the mirrors. Suddenly near where Haku landed, a kunai with an explosive tag. The tag exploded and Haku braced herself for the impact, not getting too much damage. Naruto looked to see who threw the kunai and found Sasuke inside the dome. What are you doing here? Naruto asked. I figured a dope like you would need help, Sasuke said with his trademark arrogant smirk. Haku took this opportunity and threw a few senbon to Sasuke. Naruto noticed the senbon incoming towards Sasuke. Naruto didn't have enough time to reach him, so Sasuke got hit by the senbon and fell limp on the ground. Naruto's eyes widened, and he ran towards him. Naruto looked at him and noticed that the senbon hit his neck in a non-vital area and using the Sharingan, he noticed that his chakra network was still active, so Sasuke was probably in a death-like state. Naruto decided to finish this battle, and said, Fire style, great fireball jutsu, and launched a fireball into one of the mirrors, seeing if it would be enough. To his surprise, the fireball impacted the mirror, but remained there as if nothing had happened. You can't defeat my technique with such low-level attacks, Haku said. Then, let's take this up a notch. Naruto said and made a single shadow clone and both went through a few hand seals. Fire style, great dragon fire jutsu, Naruto said. Wind style, great breakthrough, Naruto's clone said. The combination of a B rank fire ninjutsu powered up by the wind jutsu and the result was a big fire dragon rocketing towards the mirrors. Haku tried pumping more chakra to the technique but it wasn't enough. The pressure of the dragon coupled with the tremendous heat made the ice dome explode. Sending Haku crashing hard and in the ground, in pain with, with burns and her mask cracked. Forgive me, Lord Zabza. I cannot defeat this boy, Haku thought, coughing a bit of blood. Naruto approached Haku, still weary as she could still attack. Naruto made a few hand seals and said, Chakra seal. Placing his hand on Haku, he blocked her chakra and tied her up with ninja wire. He went to see how the other battle was going on, outside of the ice doom, a few minutes earlier. Kakashi and Kurenai were about to face Zabuza. Kakashi pulled up his headband, revealing a Sharingan. Sharingan again, Zabuza mocked. 
Be proud, Zabza. You were the first enemy to ever see it twice, Kakashi said and started going through hand seals. Fire style. Great fireball jutsu, Kakashi said and sent a fireball towards Zabza. Zabza didn't even budge. He went through hand signs of his own and said it. Water style. Water wall. And created a water wall that blocked the fireball, creating a cloud of steam all around. Kakashi ran forward and engaged Zabza in taijutsu. Wrong move, as Zabza was stronger due to him using the Executioner's Blade. Kakashi sent a low kick, making Zabza jump up. Kakashi tried to capitalize on this with a punch, but Zabza blocked it. Zabza jumped back just in time to block a barrage of shuriken sent by Kurenai. Water style, water dragon jutsu, Zabza said, and it sent a big water dragon towards Kurenai. She got caught in the jutsu and was sent crashing into the wall hard, disabling her momentarily. Kurenai, Kakashi yelled and made his way towards her to check on her condition. When he arrived near her, she was regaining consciousness. They made up a battle plan that would end Zabza when they heard an explosion coming from the ice dome. Naruto, they both thought. But what both them and Zabza saw was a big stream of fire coming from the dome with Haku flying towards the ground, and Naruto simply walking out of the ice dome, now practically all destroyed. Brat managed to defeat Haku, is no ordinary Genin. He must be at least joning to defeat Haku without getting hurt. Zabza said, watching Naruto tie Haku up and making his way towards his battle. Need help? Naruto asked, not even slightly winded. His massive shock reserves weren't even slightly spent. He was practically full. Sure, Kurenai got hit. Let her rest for a bit while she prepares, Kakashi said, and Naruto started sinking into the ground. How many jutsus does he know? He's a fresh genin, and so far I already saw big fire jutsu and wind jutsu, and now low level earth? Kakashi thought. Something was out of place. Zabza had his guard up. One thing he knew for sure was not to underestimate the blonde kid. He managed to easily defeat Haku. Suddenly he felt the presence behind him and turned, but he was too slow. Naruto emerged from the ground just behind Zabza, and his hand was a blue ball of chakra. Rasengan! Naruto said, slamming the blue condensed ball of chakra into Zabza until he burst into water. Shit, water clone, Naruto thought, and turned to see Zabza with his sword, ready to chop him in half. This is the end, kid, Zabza said, and brought a sword for a horizontal slash to chop Naruto in half. Naruto, Kakashi yelled. Naruto activated his Kamui once again. He's got to admit, it's a kick-ass power that most likely confuses enemies to no end. Zabza was watching as his sword was phasing through Naruto and leaving his body without a scratch. When the sword left him, Naruto gave Zabza an uppercut and jumped back near Kakashi. Zabza regained his balance. What the hell is that attack? Zabza asked, getting pissed off. He never saw anything like that. That's for me to know, and for you to find out, Naruto said, eh, smugly making Zabza even more pissed off. Suddenly, a tree started growing behind Zabza, trapping him with its branches. Tree binding death, Kurenai said, eh, making the tree grow and snaring Zabza in place without chance to escape. You are too dangerous to be left alive. What I'm about to show you is my own personal jutsu, Kakashi said, and started gathering a great amount of chakra in his right hand. The chakra changed into electricity until it started producing a loud sound. Kakashi dashed forward, intending to end Zabza's life for good. Chidori, 1,000 birds. He was about to slam it against Zabza when he heard it. <laughs> Look at that, the demon defeated by a punk, some man said on the far side of the bridge. Kakashi stopped his assault disabling his Shidori and said, Gato, with distaste. What are you doing here, Gato? Sabza asked, getting the impression the blonde kid was telling the truth. I'm here to kill you. You are simply too expensive when I can buy a few thugs I can get the job done, Gato said, smirking and thinking he was untouchable. Surrounded by 50 thugs, all equipped with weapons. Release me. We are no longer enemies. You are right, kid, Zabza said, and Kurenai lifted her illusion. Zabza picked up his sword when he was about to rush into Gato when Naruto placed a hand in front of him, making Zabza confused. I want to try out the jutsu I've been developing, Naruto said. Hey, old man, how are your supplies to finish the bridge? Naruto asked. I've got plenty, what do you ask? Tazuna said, getting confused. Kakashi sensei, Kurenai sensei, Zabza. You are about to watch my very first creation. Watch closely, Naruto said, and everyone wondered what he was going to do. Even Sasuke, who just got up a few minutes ago. You really think you can defeat us all? One of the thugs said. Naruto simply smiled. Naruto brought his hands closer and slammed them against each other and started concentrating. 
He slightly separated his hands and started concentrating lightning chakra between them. A few seconds later, the lightning chakra started shrinking into a small perfect light blue sphere. Naruto sent the sphere into the sky, and it expanded into a flash of light immediately gathering clouds in the sky. Thunders could be heard as the sky started to get darker and every rain started to fall. As the thunder intensified, everyone watched in wonder how the kid managed to make it rain without much difficulty. Is this how you're going to kill us? Rain? Gato said. Everyone thought what he was doing failed, but Naruto simply smirked. Naruto concentrated a lightning chakra in his right hand and sent a small beam to the sky. And everyone watched was a massive lightning dragon gathered in the sky as if waiting for command of its master. <laughs> Watch closely, Naruto said and brought his hand down, commanding the dragon to attack. Lightning style. Kirin, Naruto said. The dragon left the sky and rocketed toward Gato and thugs with such speed that everyone only saw a glimpse of light. Before the bridge where Gato was exploded with a tremendous source that everyone had to gather chakra to their feet just to not get blown away. Everyone watched in awe at the power of such a jutsu. When the dust cleared, there was nothing left where the thunder landed, and the place where Gato and the thugs were was now a big hole. Even the bridge itself was blown to bits. So much power, Kakashi said as he watched everything with his Sharingan. That technique was easily an S rank. Maybe I should go to the leaf. I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that, Zabza thought. That power should be mine. With that, I could easily defeat my brother. Yes, that power will be mine, Sasuke thought as he watched in awe of the massive lightning strike. What the hell are these shinobi? They can't be human, Tazuna thought in awe and a bit of fear. Awesome, my jutsu worked, Naruto exclaimed happily and everyone turned to him with their eyes fixed on him. Congrats, kid, Kurama said. It's over. Gato is more than dead, Kakashi said, looking at Naruto and laughed. So, Zabza, have you thought about Naruto's proposal? Kashi asked, and Zabza started pondering. He was tired of his life, and if he went to the leaf, perhaps he could witness that attack once again. That lighting dragon was beautiful. I'll go with you. I'm tired of this. Besides, I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that, Zabza said as he pointed at a massive missing piece of a bridge, and Naruto smirked. By the way, Naruto, congrats. That is one powerful jutsu, easily S-ranked, Kakashi said, happy that he inherited his father's talents. And the best thing is that his chakra consumption is practically non-existent. Since the dragon is powered by the natural electricity of the sky, Naruto replied, and Kakashi nodded. Maybe you can teach it to me, Kakashi said. You need a very high lightning affinity, as you need to manipulate the very essence of electricity, and also manage to gather it up in the sky. But if you want to, I would happily teach it to you, brother, Naruto said. Brother? Zabza asked. We aren't really brothers, but we're close enough, Naruto said. Dope, I demand you teach me that jutsu, Sasuke said, walking up to Naruto. No, Naruto simply said. What do you mean, no? That power should belong to me, in Uchiha Elite, Sasuke said. The reason I won't teach it to you is because you have the wrong goals. Revenge and lust for power. Naruto said and walked off, leaving Sasuke angry. That council will hear about this, Sasuke thought. Okay everyone, let's head home. Tazuna, you can work peacefully now that Gato's dead. It will probably be a few more days since Naruto decided to blow up the bridge, Kakashi said, glaring at him. Naruto simply scratched the back of his head. A few days later, everyone was at Tazuna's place packing to leave. The bridge was complete, and the way he was starting to recover from Gato's tyranny. Haku became good friends with Naruto and Hinata since they shared a common background. They were both hated and chased away from what they contained, either it be a demon or bloodline. Haku recovered very well since Naruto summoned a healing fox to help her treatment. Zabuza gave Naruto a few pointers and tips on his sword style. Zabuza was surprised when he found out that Naruto was an Uzumaki, masters in the art of the sword. Kakashi was almost floored when he found out about Naruto. Flashback. Everyone had arrived at Tazuna's house coming from their battle. They found it was a good idea to leave some backup in the house as two thugs attacked and tried to kidnap Tsunami and Inari. Kakashi called Naruto over and they both went outside of the house into the woods. So, care to explain how you could see Zabuza and Haku in the mist? Kakashi said. I know, I can trust Kakashi-sensei. My father never told you this. Actually, I believe he never told anyone other than my mother. Naruto said and activated his Sharingan. 
Kashi's eyes widened when he saw three Tomo Sharingan fire up in Naruto's eyes. How, how can you have the Sharingan? Neither your mother or father were Uchiha's, Kakashi said. Actually, my father was an Uchiha, he just never told anyone. Did you ever wonder how he could be so fast? It's true, he used the Horizon, but a normal person without any bloodline wouldn't be able to react in time at those speeds. Naruto explained, and Kakashi asked why he never pondered that situation. So, how many people know that you are an Uchiha? Kakashi asked. So far, the old man, Hinata, Shino, Kurenai Sensei, and you. And I'm happy I never told anyone since I awakened it when I was five. Otherwise, I would have probably joined the Uchiha clan in the grave, Naruto said, sending shivers to Kakashi. Oh, another thing, Naruto started. I kind of copied your Chidori since my lightning is my main affinity. Do you mind if I use it? Naruto asked, rubbing the back of his head sheepishly. I have no problem with that. Besides, the Chidori was created to be used in conjunction with the Sharingan. So, it served you well, Kakashi said. I wonder if my sensei never told me, Kakashi wondered out loud. It's probably because of who his father was, Naruto said, and Kakashi raised an eyebrow. My grandfather was Madara Uchiha, Naruto said, and Kakashi froze, hearing that name. How, how is it possible? Kakashi asked. Madara didn't die in his battle with Hashirama, and a few years later, my father was born. Naruto said, Geez, with blood like that, who knows how strong Naruto will be? Kakashi thought. You know the council will be on your ass when they find out, right? Kakashi asked. Don't worry, I already studied politics and laws. I knew someday I would need them, Naruto said laughing. This is the reason I asked the old man not to be on your team. I knew Sasuke would be with you so you could train his Sharingan when he awakened it, and I would someday have to use it, and I didn't want to always be covering it up with a genjutsu, Naruto explained, and Kakashi nodded. I'm just picturing the council's faces when they find out. Kakashi said laughing. Let's go home and rest. You need to work on the bridge tomorrow since you blew it up, Kakashi said, and Naruto sighed. End of flashback. Everyone from town was gathered up on the bridge, saying their goodbyes to the heroes. The brave shinobi that killed Gato and breathed the wave. Don't cry, Nari. I'll come visit, Naruto said, and Nari simply nodded. Take care, old man, Naruto said to Tazuna. Goodbye, and don't forget to visit, Tazuna said, and everyone nodded and left towards the leaf. What should we name the bridge? One of the town people asked. How about the Super Great Tazna Bridge? Tazna said, and Tsunami bonked him in the head. How about the Great Naruto Bridge? Since he was the one that killed Gato, and convinced Inari to fight for what he wants, Tsunami replied, and everyone agreed. The Great Naruto Bridge it is, Tazna said, watching everyone leave. Hokage's office, one day later. Everyone was in the Hokage's office, giving the report of the mission. Since their group was only shinobi, they managed to get back to the leaf much faster, even having to stop a few times so Sakura could rest, because you know Sakura's basically fucking useless. Naruto has the same talent as his father, Okage thought, reading about his lightning attack, and turned to the missing ninja in the room and started massing his temples. You give me nothing more than paperwork, Naruto, the old man said. How about this? You let Zabuza and Haku join a leaf, and I tell you how to defeat paperwork, Naruto said. And in a flash, the Okage threw two headbands to Haku and Zabuza, and it started shaking Naruto's shoulder, begging him to tell. Everyone watching this, sweat dropped. Two words, Naruto said, and the Okage focused on him. Shadow clones, he said. The Okage walked calmly to his chair. He opened one drawer and took a piece of paper that said, Smash here. He put the paper on the table and started slamming his head, saying, Stupid, stupid. I'll allow it. Zabuza, you are a missing ninja. You will have a six month probation period, Okage said, and he nodded. Haku, since you don't have any affiliation, you can join the Genin team next graduation. How about it? He asked. Actually, Lord Okage, I would like to become a combat medic. I have good knowledge of poison and medical plants, she said, and Okage pondered. Very well, you can start in the hospital. I'll have someone teach you the basics, but you still need to be on a Genin team and advanced to at least Shunin until you can dedicate full time, Okage explained, and she nodded. Everyone dismissed, Okage said, and created three shadow clones to do paperwork. Naruto, how about I take you to ramen, Okage said, and Naruto started jumping in the air shouting, Ramen? Ramen? This village is crazy, Zabsa said, and Haku nodded in agreement. <laughs>